Hey everybody. So um, today in class, really what we did, uh, we started out, we went over your prokaryote versus eukaryote worksheet. It's that cell assignment at the top. And so anyways, it, was, it said, you know, put P here if this is for prokaryote, put E here if it's eukaryote or B for both. Uh, that's what we did. Anyways, for tonight, you guys need to get that turned in by midnight tonight. So I'm not going to go over that in this video with you. I'll put that in Wednesday's video. After we did that, we kind of played, a, it was kind of a review game. We partnered up um, and I cut out these pictures for them. And I said, all right, um, certain organelle has this, or this is the function of this certain organelle. And they had to come up with the correct answer, the correct picture. And they would hold the picture up and show me which organelle they thought it was. And all of them had, you know, so we have the, oops, switch those guys around. So, you know, we had the mitochondria here. We had the cell. Smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus here, uh, ribosome, chloroplast, vac vacuole, and this, remember, so this whole cell, this is a plant cell here, but this big thing here in the middle, remember, that's the vacuole that contains all of the water, the waste and stuff, and so what I was telling them is this is a nice, I like this three, it's kind of a 3D picture because you can see the depth to it and see how big it is. And that if this vacuole here, this large central vacuole, right? So plants have one large central vacuole where animal cells have a vacuole, but they're a lot smaller and they have multiple of them. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, you can see how as a plant or anything like that starts to become dehydrated, they don't have enough water, they begin to wilt, right? And that's why is because this guy will begin to crinkle up, wrinkle and, and kind of close in. And all of these other organelles in the cytoplasm in the cell wall will begin to buckle in. And that's how the whole flower and plant ends up looking wilted. Uh, here's our cell wall. And remember, our cell wall is made out of pectin, um, cellulose, and stuff like that. And then this is always on the outside of the cell membrane. right? And so right down here, we have our cell membrane here. Um, and this is kind of a complicated looking picture, but it's really not. Uh, we've called it a phospholipid bilayer before because you see these each individual little circle or whatever, those are the hydrophilic heads. Those are the phosphate heads and the uh, lipids down here. So the phospholipid, the lipids are the little tails down here or the little legs. And that's what uh, cell membranes are made up of. And then they just have a concoction of proteins and, and carbohydrates and, and cholesterol and stuff that's put in, in the cell membrane. But remember the cell membrane, it allows for things to pass, okay? So you see a receptor here or a channel protein that only allows some chemicals or ions to come in and out of the membrane. And, you, and we're not gonna get into a whole bunch of that. We will hear later on, but as of right now on this quiz, we will not. So um, I kind of forgot to say, uh, we are gonna, gonna do a quiz retake for Wednesday. Um, the averages on the quiz last Friday was, I wanna say a D. So anyways, we did have a lot of people who got hundreds, but I'm just going to go ahead and have you guys retake this quiz and have the, take the higher of the two quizzes. Um, so that's our cell membrane. All prokaryotes and eukaryotes, right, have a cell membrane. They have to. Only plants and some kind of algae, uh, even bacteria can have a cell wall. But again, the cell wall is on the outside here of the plasma or the, the cell membrane. We have our cytoplasm. Remember, it's that jelly-like substance that chemical reactions take place here. Uh, organelles are suspended, and really it just fills up, right? It's, it's the air. It just fills up empty space, really, inside of a cell. Here's our lysosome. Um, remember, this guy has these enzymes. It says right here, these enzymes work to break down. So this thing will uh, really engulf or, you know, will pretty much take in these materials, whether it's small, bigger food particles or it's old, worn-out cell parts. It will take that in and will break all that stuff down into their small subcomponents, kind of like taking a big Lego castle. And this big Lego castle is now broken down. So this lysosome comes along and takes them and breaks them down into their individual Lego pieces so that these Legos can be reused and built to make something else bigger and better. Um, what else? What else? I skipped some other ones up here. Uh, we have our chloroplast here. All right, so these are only in our plant cells. These, uh, they're green because they have this pigment called chlorophyll in them, and this is where they do photosynthesis, right? These guys actually take energy from the sun, and they put it into these sugar molecules. Thank you. And they put them into these sugar molecules where they store that energy. Um, up here, this is our ribosome. So it says small subunit, large subunit. You don't even know that stuff, but you can tell that these are not membrane-bound. 
right? So eukaryotic cells or eukaryotic organisms have things like the chloroplast. You can see that this is an outer membrane here, right? You can see all these, here's our chloroplast here. You can see the nucleus here, the endoplasmic reticulum, membrane bound, right? That was, that's those. This is a eukaryotic cell because look how complex all the organelles that go with it. Uh, but up here, the ribosome is in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. However, they're just a large molecule. There's two, two segments that come and clamp down on this mRNA here and make proteins. So there's a lot of, uh, so I think the reason why, but there's a lot of kids who are getting a little confused between ribosomes and the mitochondria. And I think kids were thinking that the ribosomes released energy and broke down proteins because you guys think of proteins like when you eat meat or when you eat eggs and that's good source of nutrients, which it is. Protein is a great molecule or a, a great nutrition nutrient to eat. But when you guys look at proteins uh, in your body, they do a lot more than that. Um, where's, where's the, where's the, our cell membrane. So we can just see all the different types of proteins in here. We have our peripheral proteins here. We have our integral membrane proteins, glycoproteins, globular proteins, cell membrane receptor proteins. Okay. So when you think of proteins, you guys may think of them strictly in your food where I think of them. They also make up hormones uh, that are released into our bloodstream. Um, they're structural, right? Like those guys in the cell membrane. Uh, they're also enzymes, enzymes that carry out reactions and stuff like that. So there's tons and tons of kinds of enzymes and they're really not the ones that we associate with the stuff that we eat in food. Okay. So I think that's why everybody was getting ribosomes kind of mixed up with the mitochondria. So mitochondria is the powerhouse and it, and it gives us our energy. Ribosomes, they make proteins for a million different reasons. Um, back up here with our Golgi apparatus. This is a nicer picture. So you can see how we have incoming transport vesicle. And you guys don't need to know all these different terms. Um, but you have these incoming vesicles that have proteins, lipids, some other kind of molecule in there where they start making their way through these different stacks, right? So this is our stacks of membranes where they start, they'll fuse with this layer here and release their contents. And then chemical reactions take place where this molecule is modified and they'll keep making their way, keep making their way, modified package. And then these vesicles will then, you know, form like a bubble, essentially, like you blow a like you blow a bubble for a birthday party or something. And now there, here's our new secretory vesicle that has our modified proteins or lipids. And this is specific to things being materials being shipped out of the cell. So anything that goes through the Golgi apparatus is shipped out of the cell. So we ship chemicals out of our cells and into our bloodstream, and then it can be taken to different parts of our body to do different things. Um, smooth and rough ER. So here's our nucleus here. And remember the endoplasmic reticulum, smooth and rough. They, it's a folded membrane that branches off of the nucleus. So they branch off, branching off. We have our smooth, smooth out here that has no ribosomes. We have our rough inside that's studded with ribosomes sticking on the side. And so we get this protein and lipids are made here. But this is really for transport throughout the cell. So if something's made over here, it can be transported all the way over here. So this is more like intercellular transport. So inside of our cell, things are being transported around through this way. Um, and then our mitochondria. So this guy has definitely a unique look to him, just kind of like the chloroplast. Has this double membrane one out here. It's nice and smooth. And we have an inner folded, greatly folded membrane. Um, and this is where sugar is broken down. And when we break down sugar, energy is released. And this mitochondria gets that energy and then gives it to the rest of our cell. Um, and then we have our cell nucleus. So this is where our DNA is held. So it says chromosomes here. Chromosomes are just a condensed version of DNA, right? So our DNA can actually one strand of DNA in our cell, right? So we have trillions upon tr or quadrillions of cells that make up our body. Right? And all of those have 46 chromosomes in their nucleus. And those, some of those DNA strands can be about 10 centimeters long, which is about that big. Anyways, those have to get wound down and compacted into these chromosomes, these X-like structures. And get, they get so tightly packed and so small because they, you have to get, you know, they're that big. And that's not also honestly that big, but obviously we can't even see our one skin cell with our naked eye. We need a microscope to see the skin cell. Then this nucleus where they're actually being held is inside of that cell, right? So uh, you, now that kind of gives you an idea of how small molecules actually are. Okay, so here's our nucleus. And then inside we have our nucleolus, this compact region of uh, where ribosomes are being made and DNA is 
really compact. Okay. After that, we kind of talked about, uh, you know, the eight characteristics of life. So there's eight of them, right? All life. Uh, <clears throat> let me see here. All life grows and develops. All life is made up of cells. All life has DNA. Uh, did I say growth and development yet? Uh, all life maintains homeostasis, right? Homeostasis is maintaining a stable internal environment. So no matter if it gets cold or hot outside or whatever happens in the outside environment, my inside environment, my, right, inside my body is kept as consistent as possible, right? Because all of our organs and things like that have to run at a specific uh, pH level, right? A sick, uh, at acidic level or certain temperature, or I need this much glucose, right? I need this much sugar. It has to keep all that stuff very, very stable. So that's homeostasis, homeostasis, keeping that balance, keeping that stability. Um, let's see, let's see. All organisms respond to stimuli, right? So if there's a beam of light being shined into my eye, there's a stimulus because then if there's a beam of light shined in my eye, I'll probably close my eye at first, but my eye will then constrict and get smaller because it doesn't want to let all that light in. So the stimulus is causing my pupils to constrict and get smaller. So the response is my pupils responding to the bright light. Bright light is stimulus. It's causing the response. Okay. Um, what else? What else? All organisms reproduce. Right. Uh, we can't get other organisms without an organism being there first. Right. Everybody has a mother. Um, <laughs> I think about that. That's about it. You guys do have notes over the eight characteristics of life. You can go back to the PowerPoint on plan book to find that. Um, this is just a quiz redo. So I'll take the best out of the, your two scores that you get. OK. Um, and then you guys do have that immune system article that is due for Wednesday. All right. Let me know if you guys need any help and you guys need to take that quiz from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. on Wednesday. OK, just like normal. All right.